Hello everyone. Welcome to another session on cloud computing. Uh, unit number 5, Advanced Concepts, Docker, Containers and Kubernetes. In this session, we will take a basic setup of Docker on a desktop. And we will look out the steps required to set up a Docker and how to use it. Let's begin. To begin setup, uh, open any search engine and search for Docker desktop. You will find this first URL leading to a Docker page, home page. Click on this URL. It will lead you to the Docker home page. To work uh, on the Docker, you should create an account which is registered with the Docker. You can use your Gmail account to sign in. Uh, you can sign in with the Google or uh, with the any other email service provider into the Docker uh, instead of creating an account. You, it's your choice. You can create a special account with the Docker. You can simply sign in using a, any uh, Gmail account. Here there are versions which are available uh, as per the operating system. You can download it for Mac, Linux. Uh, this uh, machine that I am using is of Windows. So I will select the Windows and click on download. Uh, this will be the installer, not a complete setup. Uh, to install uh, Docker on your computer, you must have an active internet connection. Taking this uh, exe file uh, will not complete the entire setup. It will need an active internet connection for completing the setup. So let's click on the file. This will proceed with the installation of our Docker. Uh, for installing a Docker in the Windows platform, uh, you will be asked to install a WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Make sure that your computer that you are using to install a Docker have a support for virtualization technology because WSL can be deployed effectively on the machines uh, which have a virtualization technology support. So if you have a computer with the VT support, uh, that will be the good option, that will be the best option to have experimentation with the Docker. As I stated that the Docker will need uh, help from Windows subsystem for Linux. What you can do is even before proceeding with the Docker installation, you can uh, complete the installation of Windows subsystem for Linux. For that, uh, just click on the search for the software and look for add remove features. So turn Windows features and on and off. Uh, we will select this option. In this menu, uh, here you will find Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. So this is a hypervisor which we should enable and this is the Windows subsystem for Linux. So these two packages uh, you should select and click on OK. These packages will be downloaded from the web and will be deployed on your computer. So click on OK. It will search for the required uh, libraries, required dependencies uh, from the web. It will bring those dependencies, those libraries, those files on your computer and it will install it. Once you successfully deployed WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux on your computer, Windows computer, it will need a reboot. So, uh, uh, you can wait for this Docker setup behind the scene which is running uh, for completion of the Docker setup. Uh, it's better to wait for it. And uh, this is the window which is stating that the both setups are completed. Now, you should close the windows and take a reboot of your system. After that, you will be able to proceed with it, proceed with the use of the Docker. 
the machine has completed its rebooting and uh, it is now uh, ready for uh, use of uh, docker desktop docker application so let's begin with the demo so this is a subscription page uh, uh, you can read the full terms of uh, conditions of using a docker i'll uh, accept the terms and conditions so uh, you can i recommend you to go with the uh, recommended settings uh, once you are familiar with the docker uh, very well uh, you can revisit the advanced settings which you can customize even after completion the after the completion of the setup of a docker so i'll i'll stick with the recommended settings of the docker and uh, this will launch docker on your computer so uh, click on okay so here it comes like uh, sign in up sign up uh, i'll click on sign in as uh, i have activated my account with the docker i have, i'll click on sign in i have activated the account using the gmail uh, so i'll continue with the active uh, signing up process using my gmail account. Once the activation of the signing signing in process and the activation is complete, uh, you can continue with the Docker desktop setup. Uh, it will ask some few basic questions like for what purpose uh, you are planning to use the Docker, Docker uh, desktop. I will uh, click on the rule that I am going to make it use for. This will uh, proceed with the starting of a docker engine. Once the basic setup process is complete, uh, you will get this page uh, on the docker desktop. Here are the components like container, images, volumes, build, development environments, docker, scout, we will look at this uh, each of the component in detail step by step. So here there is also a basic uh, uh, learning purpose contents are available from the docker app like uh, you can go with uh, clicking on what is a container it will help you in understanding containers in detail and how do I run containers. So these two uh, short learning uh, videos will help you and learning procedures will help you in uh, beginning with the docker containers. Now, uh, if I click on images, uh, here uh, you will find two tabs. One is uh, local, which is on the upper right corner and uh, upper left corner, sorry, and there is a hub. So, this hub, if I select the hub, it will take me to the Docker up uh, portal. And if I select this local, it will show me the images which are available on my local computer. As we have just freshly deployed this docker, uh, we do not have any uh, images available locally. So, what you have to do is you have to uh, bring the images from the docker hub portal. So, here uh, what we will do is we will search for uh, some image. Let us say I am looking to uh, I am looking for starting a web service on the computer and for that I um, will need a Apache based container. So, I will search for Apache. I have to search in the search bar available on the top bar of the docker desktop. Please click here and then let us search for HTTPD images. So, here you will find that uh, these are the av options available. So, here is a HTTPD service uh, with the icon of Apache and the two commands run or pull. I am sure that you are able to recall these two commands from the session number 2 in which we discussed the docker uh, architecture uh, from uh, uh, the client of the docker you are able to fire two commands which is pull and run. So, if I uh, execute run command uh, the image will be pulled on the local computer and then it, it against that image the container will be created. If I click on the pull command it will pull the image but it will not create a container against the image. 
So for the sake of understanding, what we will do is we will first click on a pull. It will bring the image on my local computer. So let me click on pull. Before clicking on the pull, let's understand what are the options. So here is a tag. Tag is used to identify each image uniquely. So if you select the latest, uh, it will be uh, tagging the latest HTTPD image available on the Docker Hub website or Docker Hub repository. So I have selected latest. You can also uh, select any of the older version as per the suitable for your application or as per your requirement. Let's stick to latest and click on pull. Here on the right left uh, bottom corner, you will find there is a progress of the uh, pull command. Once it is finished, we will be able to see this Docker image uh, of uh, HTTPD image uh, inside our local uh, repository. So the image is pulled. If I click on the local now, here you will find this HTTP ima HTTPD images available. Now, how to run this image? So, if I click on containers, you will still find that there is no container running. But now, inside the images tab, uh, on the local repository, in the local repository, now we have one image available. So, image is the three-layer system or uh, multi-layer system. Uh, at the bottom layer, you have a kernel, Linux-based kernel. In the middle layer, you have all the libraries required by the HTTP, and the top layer is your actual Apache service or a HTTP service. To start this, uh, you can simply click on the run option. It will begin up HTTPD service on your computer. Here are three dot icons. Uh, if you click on this, you will be able to uh, uh, see what are the different options available. Uh, if you want to customize this image, that is also available. Here, once clicking on the run command, you will get some optional settings. Let's explore what are the optional settings. So here you will find that the by default port number is 80, which is inside the container and you are given the option to select a port number on the host, uh, uh, which were, which were, wherein it will redirect the traffic from the Docker container to the actual host port. For uh, let me select the port number 9000 and let's click on run. Now the image is pulled. And against the image, the Docker container is now launched. So here, these are the logs which are telling me that the Docker container is launched. And it is uh, running inside on the port number 80 inside the Docker environment. But the traffic is redirected to the port number 9000 on the local system. So what we can do is, let's open up a browser and uh, type localhost. colon 9000 and this is the message from our docker image i hope you got the basic steps of uh, the, uh, deploying a docker desktop on your computer fetching the image from the docker hub repository getting a local image uh, uh, getting an image in the local repository and launching a container against the image in the upcoming videos, we will explore more options available, more command line interface available with the Docker application and Docker uh, client interface. Thank you.